Hello and welcome to the biggest announcement that we have ever made. Sunday, September 4th, downtown Emporia at the Granada Theater for the final round of Worlds. We are going to record commentary live. Help me out, you guys. I, I thought you were going to... Final round of the World Championships. We're doing the thing live with a studio audience. So these tickets, you're going to have to go to jomezpronextdaylive.com to get these tickets, to get all the information. But at this event, Paul, tell them what they're going to get exclusive merch, a meet and greet opportunity, us, and maybe a special guest. Special guests including Mike Tyson. The inventor of Skittles. Alf might be there. Very fake James Bond. <laughs> Very fake James Bond. <laughs> we reached out to Randy Moss. His people came back with a polite no, but he did get back Randy to us. Moss. Just, can you imagine? Actually, special I know. Guest Randy Moss. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't be in Emporia, don't worry. We're going to find a way to let you join in on the action no matter where you are in the world. This is not just us recording commentary. We are going to have a DJ set from Starframe. We're going to be signing autographs. We're going to have merchandise. This is going to be the world premiere of the last round of the World Championships 12 hours before the rest of the world gets to see it. We all know disc golf is best watched in a post-produced format, but post-produced commentary is best seen live. We'll see you there. Hello everyone and welcome to the exciting conclusion. We have round three back nine coverage of the 2022 True Blank Des Moines Challenge. Jeremy Colling, Paul Uliberry, bringing you all the action. Big Berry commentary, Paul. A little recap of that front nine real quick, buddy. You got it. Robert is just yeah. shredding with a seven under par. Hanging around is the rest of the card. They're hanging around, mm -hmm. especially with Robert never winning before. I feel like there's always going to be that little hope for the rest of the field. We see Kevin Jones shredding the front nine as well with a five under. But like I said, too clear of that is Robert. Let's see if he can keep that going into this back nine. If he can, it's all his. As we look at this tee shot here on hole 10, this is a par five, 844 feet, hyzer to roughly the top of the hill, hyzer down to nearly the bottom of the hill, and then just a pitch across. I wanna take a look at that top 10 and talk about wins in the year, in the elite series and majors, and talk about how new our players are in the top 10. The only people with any experience wins, Paul McBeth, who has 55. <laughs> okay. Just crazy. I think that's right here. 55. 55. Simon, four. Okay. 55, yeah, elite series and majors total. Kevin Jones, two. Mason Ford and you both at one, and that's it. So very little experience for actually winning, aside from Simon, in contention right now. Okay. And that can come into play late in those last four or five holes. Absolutely. Fairways start tightening up. The baskets get smaller. But this tee pad, I mean, this fairway is quite large. All these shots are in ideal position. Looks a little tight. It's tight. And don't do that. Okay. It's still in birdie position. Yeah. Just in, that, in a way, it's actually not a bad play because it really allows you to do a full shot. Oh, boy, that was close to that branch that, right there. That would have been devastating. Scary. He needs a little help, and he's getting mm -hmm. it. And now, yeah, that's prime, mm -hmm. especially with his elite sidearm. Yeah, he's got a good forehand. He should have a good look from there. This is hyzering left, and sometimes you see them stand up, and they start rolling, and it's like, just Stop. don't go left. Don't go too far right either. That's fine. Perfect. Simon going with the standstill. Sometimes that can be tricky, but Simon's one of the best at it. That's a little high. It's going to be heading pretty far left. Should maybe check up in time, and just barely does. Wow, that came really close. That was very close. Oh, 
I like this one flatter mm -hmm. coming in. And look at this. Robert Burridge, longest drive on the group of Simon in the car. We saw him on hole two and hole one really bomb his drives. He's got a ton of power. There's a much needed birdie there for Evan to erase that bogey on the last hole. Oh, a little high. Gets through. Uh oh. Bullseye. <laughs> that could have done so many things. Yeah. With the way that he's rolling right now, you just want to do whatever you can to continue the good times. If something stands up and rolls downhill OB, it can throw the whole thing out of whack. And that was high out of Simon's mm -hmm. hand. Okay. Kneeling down. I like this play better. Heiser the whole way, get it to the ground, skip it up there. Closest one out of the bunch. Pretty stress-free birds here. Star frame, I mean, that's typical. I saw a yeah. lot of star frames on this one. This is the easiest hole on the planet. The average went up during round two. I'm guessing that had to do with the the wind that was picking up, but the, the wind is pretty calm right now. It's been times throughout the round where it's been a little breezy, but nothing that doesn't just keep you honest and nothing that's going to really affect the round unless you make it affect the round. And then we get a go into hole 11, one of my favorite holes on the property, just because of the variety. Of I mm -hmm. really like how you can go high off the tee shot. This is what I'm talking about. You can go high right out over that big old tree in the middle. You see the mandatory on the left, so it does take the big Anheuser play. You go low right where the drone's going. Here's the garden right here. This is where you want to go. If you want to get aggressive, you can get to about right here. And then you just have to play one of those really skilled, elite-level disc golf shots down the yeah. tunnel. No, it's a fantastic find. Well-designed hole. Very important placement shot here. See what Robert elects to go with. He's going MD4, low. And something about his charisma right now, I just really like it. He just seems to be in his own rhythm. Not affected by the circumstance, just taking the shot one by one. Yeah, rhythm it up, but that shot was not very good. Uh -oh. Joel that's not good. is going the high tight route, and that's going to be short and oh, left. Great kick. Kind of coming back to the edge. Might give him like a forehand roller or a turnover shot coming up. I don't quite know if he'll have a room to attack. You can get into position over there where you can't even pitch out. Though. Yeah, sure. Simon, this is absolutely bomb. Oh my God, that's, that's past so the good. garden. Mm -hmm. That's picking fruit right there. Mm -hmm. That's a bountiful harvest. I like the pace on this one. This is kind of the spot that you were illustrating on the flyover. That is a really well-placed drive for Evan. And look at this rip over here. Robert with the, his big germ Thunderbird, and that is in C2. That's in striking range. Oh, it's fantastic. Back to the basket to get that much power. That, that went all of 340 feet at least. That one went. Did oh not, no! Not good, but that's you got to make a shot from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and look what Joel's left with. Not even risking any more forward momentum on that. Just pitching straight sideways and leaving the sharp hyzer. He goes high with the mid range, which is which this is, is pretty good. This is going long. This could roll even. Mm. A bit. Scary putt coming back down at For it, too. Sure. I've seen a lot of rollaways on this hole. Simon, an opportunity to carve into that two-shot lead, potentially. And he's going to roll this up inside the circle, and he has been perfect in the circle all weekend. You can pretty much count that one in. So should I mark it, and then it would be behind, and I, then I can move it? Because if he marks it, it would be even in his backswing and on the ground. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The, his stance doesn't have to be straight back. 
All right. I'd say so you can move it. That's fine. That's actually I'm fine about I think that. If you, it's a little sketchy. If, if I mark it, I can move it. Yeah. Okay. Dead and unattached debris on the course can be moved if it's, if it's behind your line in your stance. Evan trying to get that pesky branch out of the way, and it's a really good out shot. Yeah. Right, let's see if we can capitalize on this hyper aggressive. Whoa. And laying up, and I like that play. The koozie on this basket is unkind. If you miss your putt and you hit that thing, there's no stopping your disc from rolling all the way back down the hill. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, That is a scary par save for Joel. I agree about the koozie, but wow. a real soft place to land is right there. I hear that. I mean, it's not just the koozie, though. You know, you hit right side rim. If you even hit it square and come back down, you can start rolling on this hill with just the tiniest bit of momentum. I'm just not a big fan of laying up circle two putts ever, especially somebody who's got a billion in a row. But he's also got a billion in a row. Yeah, and he, I mean, he, he's given himself an opportunity to lay up, you know, and make Simon make the putt, which he's been doing very well all weekend. But he's afforded the opportunity to make that decision. And obviously, walking away with par is so much better than feeling like you made a mistake and rolled away and you gave one, you gave two back instead of just one. Either way. On to hole 12, par 3, 260. There's a double mando the players have to navigate. From there, it's a pretty straight shot, but there is OB down the hill to the right, and any OB or missed mandatories will go to a drop zone. Simon with the lone birdie on the previous hole. Oh, pulls Very in. high. And did that even make the mandatory? Looked like it kicked, kicked right, made the mando. Yeah. That was very, that was pulled very hard left. And so is this one. Good break near the rocks. That'll be just right around C1 for Robert. I like this. Very nice shot for Joel. He's kind of buttery smooth, this kid. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really miss angles based on how hard he throws either. I'm standing on top of it. It looks like it's going to go. I'm gonna go up and take a look. Let me, yeah, should... let me look at the arrow. Yeah, I'll kind of point at, from the disc. Okay, Paul, what's going on here? I'm, I'm going. Well, it looks front like of they have. Front? It looks like they have the debate of. I'm, I'm right over Even if now. you make the I mean, mando, if it goes back around, it you have missed it. By, like, it so he would have to then re go yeah, through the mando. You get what I so mean? If, yeah, so that kicks from the fair side of the mandatory. Yep. Back behind the line of the mandatory, which means that Simon has missed the mandatory. Yes. And is determined by the group that he has gone backwards through it. And that is a new rule implemented this season. And this is one of the easiest holes in the course, and Simon is going to be taking a bogey right after taking a stroke away from Robert, he might be losing two. This is a huge moment right here for Robert. Oh, he loved it out of the hand. And what is going on right now, Paul? He's making birds. Look at the scorecard, seven down on the front nine, seven under in the last nine holes that we've seen. Yeah, he didn't lay that one up, did he? Green light go, and 
green is the is the color right now for Robert. He has just filled that scorecard with just, I mean, all sorts of different types of shots. Yeah, the big open shots, big putts. Yeah, wrong moment for Simon to catch a bad break. That's a bad break right there. Yeah. Really bad. First time I've seen that rule implemented in that way. Hi, my name is Jesse from Trash Panda, and as we all know, disc golf is changing faster than ever, and the stories behind that change must be told. So, Jomez and I are stoked to announce our new podcast, Patent Pending, a show about the future of disc golf, where it's my job to discover the untold stories of innovation in our sport. You can check out the first two episodes right now, wherever you listen to podcasts. Wow. Hole 13, par 3, 333 feet. One of the places to go straight through this gap as you are seeing the drone fly and finding a way to break right down here. There is out of bounds right side over that hill that you can see right at the basket and long. There is also a hyzer sidearm play that looks like that is the play that Robert is trying, and this is going to require a bit of crossing your fingers and hoping it gets through. That only makes it to the front edge of the gap. Kind of looked like a layup. It did. Again, I mean, you have three strokes. You can, if you do throw a good shot and go through that gap, you can find out of bounds. And he just needs to avoid taking bogeys right now. I mean, three birdies. Yeah. Catch him. God, what a bummer for Simon, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, that rule is just absolutely ridiculous. Not a fan of it personally. But them's the rules. Rules are the rules. What is... Oh, he's going hyzer. This could... Whoa. I've heard people doing this. This could be... This could be bad. I, but it's high enough. I don't think... He, it also has so much up top that it can hit and kind of filter down to the pin. In a way, it's kind of using the trees to your advantage. No, absolutely, but if you do catch something over to the right, that's a bad spot to be. That is a great approach scramble for Joel from out of position. Joel's having putting together a nice back nine here. Mm -hmm. Going after it. Long run. Careful though, it gets sticky back there. Mm -hmm. The straddle putt from there on the on the high rise can definitely be really tricky. This is just gonna be a layup. Thank you. Simon, this is forty five. Very scary putt. Oh my god, that's so good. What? I think he thought he made it. Look how slow that spin putt is. I love mm -hmm. that. Not the round Evan was looking for today, but still, 19 under par the way this course is played this weekend. He is still putting together a very fine performance. A couple birdies on his way out. He could still be in position for a potential podium finish. Absolutely. We're going to have four unique pars. Tough hole, man. 13 was a tough get this it, week. It really, yeah. It, it was right there in the middle of difficulty, but it just wasn't really producing a ton of birdies. A lot of pars, 60% of the field. Pretty much equally split between bogeys and birdies on the other 40%. On to hole 14, par 4, 720 feet. The play is to get nearly 300 to three to 430 feet if you want to cut off a lot of distance but whatever you do keep it in the middle if you're off on the left side or right side it is very difficult to attack this hole i like this it just needs to sit down this fairway slopes from left to right and it can stand up and roll and puts the brakes on that's perfect yep dealer's choice from right there backhand sidearm thumber Joel's trying to do the same, but this is a oh, very good tree. Lovely. <sighs> yeah, 
Needs to flip. This is going to filter if it gets past this pine. Doesn't get past the pine. And gives him a yeah. shot. There's a shot from there. It's not a great one. Yeah, it's, it's a long shot, and it's got a weird run up. This is that wide route. He needs to miss the foliage on the right. Yeah, that is working out great. Nice trust with that width working its way back to the middle. This is doable. Z needs a zinger and get out of that. Get stable. Okay. Zinger achieved. Yeah, circle's edge. Just outside. You would take that every day from that lie. Yes. That is a great result from back there. This is probably going to be pretty close. Joel's really good with that. Yeah, you know, when when you see him line up the gator, it's kind of like when Presnell goes with the drone. You, you know something good's happening. They were bare, both very comfortable I've with I've literally discs. jinxed Joel twice now. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, on the island hole. Oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. Out of bounds. This is going to be close. Robert, calm it down. I don't think right now is when he should be calmed down. I think he needs to keep doing exactly what he's doing. Keep doing it. He's going to keep pressing. <laughs> I'm going to shoot one of the better rounds ever. Like, ever. Just no stipulation. No, like, <laughs> like just fantastic round. <laughs> yeah. He could shoot course record if he keeps this up. Absolutely. Oh, pretty easily. Oh, dang. You usually That's need true. to do it, yeah. yeah. got to get it up. Like this. Yeah. Perfect pace. That was beautiful. I like his pace. Mm -hmm. Everything Evan does is very methodical. Simon. Great birdie. Very good. Ooh, what's this new move? The check, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I've seen this. What, the grab grass in front of you? For him, I feel like he's been pretty quick. I, he, he did it on the front nine. He did? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, reading the wind a couple different times. That's oh. always a weird one for me to think that you could grab grass on the ground. How is that different than a stick that's in front of your eye, you know? Joel with a good putt. Very full, good putt for full, Joel. Full extension. Yep. Follow through, everybody. He finally got it up. Yes. Hole 15, par 4, 600 of those feet we talk about. <laughs> Out of bounds right. You want to throw it through this gap low, get a skip without going left. There is a hill there that all the hyzers kind of filter down to the left. Stay in the fairway, and then you have a really difficult shot into this green. Very tight. Forest on the left, out of bounds on the right that comes in probably about 40 feet on the right right there. So, Paul, Robert Burge has a three-stroke lead with four holes to go. And this is a bit tight, but it looks like he's on the edge. Yeah, that's okay. Yep. As long as he can reach mm -hmm. out and throw a little sidearm, pretty, yeah. pretty manageable. Very good skip, but there, That's there's that, that filter. Yeah. yeah, you really want to push through this gap. Let's see if Simon can do it. Yep, that's it. Ah, skip. Don't go straight. Go like that. That's it. If there's a time for him to do it. It's right now because mm -hmm. Robert did go left. He's not taking birdie from there. There is no birdie chance. So if you get one back. He's just got to kind of chip away. Joel, this looks high, and that's it. it is high. That is just inches away from being right where he wants it to be. But yeah, Does he go go for it. No, doesn't look like it. This is a this is gator. Every bit of four hundred feet. Yeah, kind of smoked that gator though. Was that a gator? It looked like it. Oh, dude, this is bad. Um, okay. Wow. He was way down there. That's the first bit of trouble that we've seen him in and not 
but he did he it was a kind of a good out i don't know if that was going yeah. out of bounds or what was mm-hmm. going on with that it was a good kick down in there mm-hmm. and so now he's where a good drive would be and simon's still not up yet so this shot very important for robert to give himself a chance at the par and this is early left that's not good Looks like Robert's going to be dropping at least one stroke. Okay, well, Simon, this is the most important shot of his tournament right here. Let's see if he can get it on that Anheuser. Perfect. Does. God, that's good. This is perfect. That's trust. Situationally perfect. Execution-wise perfect. For him, they couldn't come at a better time. Mm-mm. Looks like somebody's played a little ultimate frisbee. Yeah. That's more of a traditional look yeah, there. That's like a disc golf forehand yeah. versus Robert's was definitely an ultimate forehand. See if you can ring up two from deep in a row. New no. little hysery. Wow. Simon for birdie, and now he's right back where he was just a few holes ago. Uh-oh. One back. That's how fast it can change on the Pro Tour, man. You cannot have a hiccup. People are there playing good all the way down yep. to, like, third, fourth guard. You never know. It's so but, crazy. Yeah, you just you, you you have just, to birdie him. <laughs> you just got to birdie them all. Like, he's birdied all of them, and you would think, oh, and, he's well clear. Mm-hmm. One mistake, and the rest of the field is in there. In these course conditions, a bogey, I mean, it's a huge setback. Yep. But, man, that, that comfort that he may have felt on the tee on 15, I don't know if it felt comfortable in his head. Three holes, one stroke germ. Nothing's comfortable about that. No, but, but I, I would love it. He has the lead. Yes. And he's going into hole 16. This is a par three blind, 315 feet. There are several trees in the middle. And not only that, it's downhill the whole way. It's blind. There's out of bounds within three paces of the basket. Anything can happen here. Very important hold. This could be a two stroke swing and just a snap. This is looking a little tight. I like tight though. Uh, not that tight. Oh, filters. Yeah, that worked out. Mm. That's good. It's safe. That's what you mm-hmm. want right here because, like you said, out of bounds, is it's a t- it's tough to throw and hit the gap without going out of bounds. It's, like, tough because you have no control over the ground play. Like, look that at that. Looked, that looked like perfect ground play. But it yes, is, but, but you don't know. But you're two feet away. You're just looking straight at the yeah. spotter and just say, show me green, please. Yeah, he's two feet away from being out of bounds, from perfect out of bounds. So, Joel, this is also tight. This is heading towards where Simon was, but no, faster. And the bucket stops him from going out of bounds. Wow. Now this, with the crowd cheering, Robert knows he's got to put one close unless he wants to lose that lead. I do like it. Very wide, very overstable with the Toro. Spinning, rolling, and stopping. So good. What a clutch shot. So good. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was so waggy. Simon with the fist pump mid flight. Such confidence in that putting stroke right now. The match play continues. Center. It looks, the way he's conducting himself, looks like he's comfortable, like, being here, like he's been here a dozen times before. I mean, he's, he's probably won a couple tournaments and big, big stage at the Collegiate Nationals and, and U.S. I mean, U.S. Ams. 
Please don't let me into my zone. 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 I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation. You can conversate to that tone. Uh, I got up on that throne, yeah. So I'm never alone, yeah. Balling can't beat me up because I'm back in my zone now. Nah. But what I was saying is having that experience in those type of situations, it brings up the it same nerves. Yeah, same yep. nerves. And we see Kyle Klein, who won big. Yep, on the NADGT. Exactly. And now we see him kind of doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. So early and earlier and earlier, these players are getting groomed for this moment. Yeah. Simon with the origin and... Uh, Oh gosh. Boy. Oh man. Okay. Your move. Let's not gloss over the awesome star frame that we just had on 16 too. Oh, that was a star frame. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. Easiest okay. hole in the world to get star frame? No. I gotta get like so much love. Joel with the sidearm turnover makes the gap look huge. Got it. Are we going to get another star frame? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, this guy right here is hoping you, that they're going to have a star frame. Oh boy. Kick left. Okay. You kick right, you take that one stroke lead, and you can just flip it into a one stroke that deficit. That was a pressure yank. Yeah. That's exactly what that was. That was, I'm in the lead. Oh, and that needs to sit. Yeah, okay. It should be fine. He's been putting really well. But, yeah, that was uh, still smiling about it. Doesn't seem stressed. Joel. Doing work on the back nine. Yeah, Here's a he is. Huge putt. Nah, not really. He's making the putting thing look easy. Yep. Well, what a time Simon. for Simon to step up to the moment. That is now, what, four birdies in a row heading into the final hole. We are tied. <laughs> we are tied. Imagine what Robert is going through right now. Like he looks calm and mm-hmm. composed. There's no way but to there's tell. There's no way he is. He just got tracked down. <laughs> he just lost. You lost three strokes in two and three holes. Yeah, with a bird. With a birdie. Boy. Well, hole 18, folks. Par five, 1,080 feet. Big uphill tee shot. You really just want to chew off a lot of distance here. And normally I'd say Simon advantage, but Robert's been just Crushes. crushing yep. the disc, so I can't say that. In control the whole time. Who can get the birdie? This is all a lot about match play here, too, as well. Who gets to throw the first, second shot? Who gets to throw the first, third shot? And so on and so forth. And also, who gets the last look at the putt? Yeah. Meanwhile, Evan Smith has kind of cleaned it up on this back part. Yeah. So proud of him for that. Four birdies. And right back there, T3 with Joel Freeman at 22 under mm-hmm. par. Podium finish coming if they can avoid a big number, maybe even get a birdie and take third place solo. All four big tee shots. Or all three, excuse me, Robert coming. You just got to do your best not to land right behind one of those trees. And if you go left, like this is heading left, you don't have to worry about that. That is a great shot. Ton of power right there next to Simons, I believe. Maybe even past Simons. Oh, get low and left. And oh. behind that tr- that bush is just evil. Is it a tree or a bush? I can't even tell. It's like halfway between both. Either way, you don't want to be behind it. Simon's looking very high. I can tell by the run-up. Oh, he nicked something. I don't think that's going to really affect the shot negatively in any way. He's past that tree. 
and that is in prime real estate. I'm like a little fist pump, a little smile from Robert. I see you. I like that camaraderie there. He looks like he's having a great time, which is yeah. what you got to do in this situation. Wow, he goes over the right side. That is huge as well. And I think he's going to be throwing the first approach now, which if he throws a good one, that could put like, the pressure on Simon. Yeah, I feel like that could be a good thing. Uh-oh. Tree no. bush. <laughs> that bush is... The infamous tree bush. It's in such a good spot. It really, really is. It forces you to do things that you don't want to do. He's a flip. Oh, it's this is gonna... heading to the audience. <sighs> so we'll have a putt for par to maintain that third place position. So I kind of like the aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. All right. Big time play here. Sorry. Forehand has been on point all day. This is nice width. Miss the tree. tree. Oh, gosh. Sit. oh, boy. What a shot. Very good, okay. That could be a really wow. nervy 23-foot putt. Yeah, well, it's going to either be to tie or to win. So it's going to be a nervy putt no matter what. No matter what. what, yeah. Joel not loving that one, but he's still at circle's edge, but from that distance, he's certainly looking to put it under the basket. So here it is. Simon knows what he's got to do. This is turned over. I don't like that. But it is still in the circle. Catches the, catches the grass there, too, mm -hmm. and doesn't filter in very deep. So they got pretty similar distance in putting here. Big putt for Evan to maintain tide. Great effort. Just a bit high. Great weekend for Evan. And bogeys for both of those guys. Simon up first. He's been there. Yeah. It has been a joy watching Simon play the way he's been playing all year. That putt could give him the title. Robert doesn't want that to happen. Ooh, with the reaction. Let's go. The pace of which that putt went in and the aim and all of it, just look at that love right there. That's what the sport's about right there, Paul. We're not done. Okay, playoff time. Hole one. Two, three, four, till they're done. Hole one, two, three, four, five, and then, you and then 18. Over. And then... Oh, I thought they just keep going. Nope. One, two, two, three, four, five, okay. 18. Until a winner is determined. I'm going to flip a coin to determine who goes first off the tee. We will flip-flop every hole after that. Mm -hmm. Simon, you are head. Robert, you are tail. It is head. So Simon will go first. Robert second. Do it for the dad. Hey. <laughs> Same wind as earlier in the day. A little right to left crosswind. It is a helping wind. That's really good. Nothing bad can happen with that stroke. No. Yep. When 
when you have the power that these two do that right just doesn't come into play because of the crosswind and the amount of power and height they can give it so no surprises here both in the middle of the fairway now just like you said before chess match who goes first to apply the pressure it's going to be robert yeah okay and with his forehand, I really like his chances of putting the pressure on Simon. Turned it over. This needs to slow down. He needs to start hyzering right at the very peak length. Just outside C1, but he's got to look. Yeah, that tree could be in his way. It opens the door for Simon to put one close and put the pressure right back on Robert. Turned over as well, and this isn't going oh, anywhere. Oh, he just starts running. He is disgusted with the effort, but that is, that's Simon for you right there. <laughs> he ran after his I love shot. it. All right, he's got to run this. Oh, absolutely. That's going to come up short. <laughs> Robert Burridge, folks. <laughs> Robert Burridge, the man that you most likely had not heard of before today has a putt to win the Des Moines Challenge. Just missing it right and goes far enough where there's a little bit of yes. a little bit of tension here. You certainly never want to see a playoff decided with a missed putt and Robert Burge is not missing putts. Not not in the circle, at least. That was a very confident delivery. Yes. Okay, extra hole. You, know, you, you touched on this earlier, talking about how amateurs are being bred into learning how to win. People ask a lot of the times, when do I move from amateur to pro? And I think you've got to put yourself in the position to know how to win. Yes. And he's done this multiple times before. This is, seems like a seasoned veteran, the way he's playing right now. That's a great drive. And, and you know, with social media now that he's watched everybody play, it's like he knows mm -hmm. us, you know? He mm -hmm. knows Simon. He's play, He's imagined playing against Simon before. Guarantee it. You don't get to this spot by accident. He has reached out multiple times to play practice rounds with me and several other players, and he's picking their brains while playing these rounds and really trying to understand how to become a top pro putting it together all this weekend. He's going to be first once again with Simon throwing a great drive in the middle. I need to pick his brain. Lots of action here. Checks up just like he did in the round earlier today. He keeps leaving himself these 22, 25 footers, <laughs> yeah. man. But pressure back on Simon. I like the width. This is moving kind of fast, but not that fast. A little game of putt here for the title. Simon's out. Simon's in. I always like to say first in wins. Applying that pressure is so important. You keep doing that over and over again, someone's going to break. Not this kid. This is awesome. And of course, yeah. it's going to come down to hole three. Yep. Simon up first. Get through. Did we? We just saw our first drive all week on Jonas get through the tight cap. Simon, of course, right now does that. And Robert's smiling like, "Okay, what but am that, I going to have to do?" That circle's edge. That ain't no gimme. It's just out the gap. I'm just impressed yeah. to see it. Yeah. 
This is very low. And kicking forward. Okay. okay. All the way to the top of the hill. That's actually still even one of the best drives we've seen this weekend on the whole. Front of the trees, yeah. I mean, he's going to be 55 feet. Yeah. But there's no laying this up. No. Simon at 35 is a deadly, deadly man. Oh. Oh. Corner pocket, baby. Robert Burridge from Wait. deep. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Burst in wins? How do you catch that? Oh, my God. What a putt. This man is having the day of his life. Oh, Simon. Is that enough? To keep it going. Wow. What are these guys on? Birdoids. <laughs> Did you see that? Two really good catches. Two really good catches. I mean, those had some some to be desired for, for sure. Yeah. Okay, Robert up, hole four. Par three, over the water. Those are the first two birdies we've had on coverage all week. I like this. This is looking so good. Oh, no. Okay, stays in bounds, but he hits the stump of all places in the circle. Skips up to 60 feet. Okay, this is wide open now for Simon. Yeah. That is a tough putt up there. Super high. high. Ah, this is flipping too. Yeah, okay. Circle's edge. He likes it. I mean, anything within the, the realm of the basket, he's loving right now the way his putter's flying. Yeah, this is tough. He's got the tree right in his way. Got to lay it up. Yeah, you just can't lose it. It's, he says, all right, Simon, knock it down, dude. Nothing you could do from that. That was just a really tough break with that stump. Well, My you can't goodness. give Simon the option of just laying it up. Mm. For the win. Did he point to yeah. the crowd? Yeah. <laughs> he pointed for the reaction. Oh what my What a savage. God. What a performance from both of these guys. Unbelievable. And what? The 2022 True Bank Coin Challenge presented by Bistrap champion Simon Lazat. He's birdied nine of the last 10 holes, Paul. Look at this. Your third Elite Series victory this year. I'm going to let you catch your breath a little bit. First off, look at all these people around you that have been chanting your name all week. What do you have to say to these people? It's almost like too nice. Like Iowa has been just such a treat. I think it's my first time here ever playing disc golf. And I felt super welcome. And we love you! And, uh, and I'm so mind blown that I just won. It like, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Robert Burridge was on fire. He was nine down through 13 holes. Comment on him and what it was like battling with someone like Robert. Yeah, I have. I don't think I've ever played with him before, so I didn't really know, didn't know too much about him. But he was throwing the disc so much better than all of us. So I was like, if he's gonna win, he totally deserved it. He got screwed on this freaking tree stump right there. But no, huge shout out to him. He was an amateur last year, so that was an unbelievable battle. What a wild finish this was. Robert takes the bogey on 15. You both birdie 16, he misses 17. You go into 18 tied. What's going through your mind? Something weird happened on four, what is it, 12? And then he was like up three or four. And I was like, man, I guess that it's just gonna happen like that. But that took the pressure off of me, which meant I could just start playing. And that's when I play my best is when I can not be under pressure and just freaking throw the disc. And yeah, he made that mistake on 15. And then I birdied out somehow out of nowhere but that's golf. I made like every putt this week too, it was crazy. It was so strange because I struggled in Europe at the major. Historically, my majors have always been like lackluster and I don't really know why, I can't explain it. But obviously this, this win is a huge confidence boost. And again, just a, a, a reminder that it's never over till it's over. And I'm just really excited tomorrow to go back to Massachusetts for a week to see my family. Well, congratulations, Simon, and good luck at the World Championships next week.
In a season that has had so much disparity with unique winners, Simon Lazat joins Ricky Wysocki as a three-time winner on tour this year. Calvin Heimberg with a couple wins on tour this year. It has been top-heavy but also distributed. And my goodness, Robert Burge, 11 under fire emoji round on league card on Jomez, like Simon said, an amateur last year. Clearing the field by the next closest was six strokes back. Yeah. Incredible performance. Yeah, they put on a show. I I don't know that that image of Simon pointing to the crowd while his putt was still in the Chills. air is just like kind of ingrained into my mind right now. And our next event's World Championships. I mean, that if you like momentum, that's a lot going in there. Mm. Uh, Simon, wow. There's a reason why he's the crowd favorite, and that's because he puts on a show making putts look at another fist bump while the disc is in the air well in this strange event the weather was was a little strange what the postponed first round was strange but in the end we were given one of the most fantastic finales with simon birding nine of the last 10 holes to take down robert burge in a playoff some new faces this week on jomez just some incredible disc golf cannot wait to see how this affects the players going into the world championships in Emporia, Kansas coming up in a week and a half. Thank you to the Founders Club. We'll see you guys next time.